So you have just upgraded your Captivate to the 2019 edition, and you are just rip-roaring excited about creating some virtual reality projects. Hi, folks. This is William Everhart with eLearning Uncovered. And in this quick tutorial, I just want to show you some of the little nuances about virtual reality projects and 360 slides that I discovered while doing some research on our upcoming Captivate 2019 book. So I'm going to try to keep this as brief as possible. There are some other videos out there from Adobe announcing the virtual reality projects and the 360 slides. So you can get some information there. I really want to just focus on some of the things that they didn't talk about. Let's go ahead and start off with a virtual reality project. So right here on the new tab of the splash screen, I'm going to click on virtual reality project and go ahead and create that. Notice that I don't have a slide size here. There is no set size for it. What if we wanted to add additional slides to a VR project? Well, let's just take a look. If I go up here to the slides menu, notice that all of the slide types are grayed out except for the 360 slide. Once again, I can only have 360 slides within a virtual reality project. Now, of course, the next step here, once we create the project, is to go ahead and add either a 360 image or 360 video. And if you are watching this tutorial, odds are you navigated here from uh, my blog post about this particular uh, situation that I found myself in. Where do I get 360 imagery? Now, I'm used to being able to go to various uh, stock image sites and be able to find lots of wonderful, as I like to call, big, beautiful photographs on those sites, and I can use those for pretty much all of my presentations. Well, when it comes to VR, that's probably not going to work quite as well. And that's just because of the way that I think people are going to use VR. But now, if you just wanted to try out VR for yourself, just kind of get a feel for the features here in Captivate well, the folks at Adobe have included a handful, and I think there's seven of the um, 360 images. No video, but there are some 360 images that you can play around with here in your VR projects. So let's do that. Let's just add one of the images that Adobe includes with the Captivate 2019 release. So here I have my uh, Windows C drive. This is my primary hard drive. If you're on a Mac, this is going to be your Mac hard drive. Uh, program files. If you're on a Mac, this is going to be the Applications folder. From there, the Mac and the PC navigation is going to be the same. So whether you're in the Program Files folder on a PC or the Applications folder on a Mac, you're going to look for the Adobe folder. And from there, Adobe Captivate 2019. And then the Gallery folder inside of that one. And then finally, the 360 BG Assets folder. Now, once you get to this folder, as I said, there are seven images in here. I am going to work with this one called the Studio Apartment. I'm going to select this one, choose Open, and there we have it. We have our 360 environment. Well, check out what happens when I click and drag this slide around. Notice the slide's not moving, but the image is, and it's like I am navigating around. I'm looking around in this room. So I'm just going to move this around a little bit, and I'm going to set it about here. So here is the next tip. When you place a 360 image or video into a 360 slide like this, that is the initial view. So the image has a default but I have reset that here for this slide. Now, if I were to place this image again, it would go ahead and default back to its normal position, which was the front door of this apartment. So you will have to reposition them for each new project or each new slide. Now, the next thing you should know about uh, a VR project or even 360 slides is the fact that, well, they have a limited amount of time in which the learner can experiment with them. That is, unless you add some feature to pause the playback of the slide. And so one of the first things that I like to do is to add a hotspot to my VR projects. Let's say I want to navigate. Let's say I want to have the learner 
maybe click to get some information about these little coat racks here. I'm gonna go up here to the top. Now there's only a certain amount of media that I can include within a 360 slide. I do have text labels. I have hotspots. And then I have media. Now within the media, I only have a couple of options here. I have an audio track and then I can also include a character. But notice that image is grayed out. However, you can use images. It's just you're not going to find them here in the media folder. If I jump back over here to the hotspots, well, here at the bottom, there is the image. And that brings us to the next tip. When you place an image in a 360 slide, it is going to scale that image to its full size. Just be mindful of that that it may take over a good portion of your slide. Now it will move in your 360 environment. So as the learner scrolls around or navigates around in the environment, that picture is going to move and wrap around the environment along with your 360 background image. Now, the other thing about images inside of a VR project or a 360 slide is the fact that you cannot scale them once you place them. So, you're gonna to wanna to use a tool like maybe Adobe Photoshop to go ahead and scale down your images before you bring them into your 360 slides as a hotspot. Now, the last thing that you could add to your project, we saw the media here as an audio file, but maybe you have a narration script and you have to narrate it. You can use the record feature here to record your microphone and uh, add that to your 360 project. But these are the only media types or, or objects that you can add to a 360 slide. Well, I want to add a hotspot and I am just going to add, oh, let's say the little info hotspot here. When I do, it places it right in the center of the screen, but maybe that's not where I want it. Well, I just simply pick it up and move it. Now notice that as I move it, it is distorting that icon. Notice that it's getting larger here and it's getting kind of squished or stretched horizontally there. Well, that is because it is mapping this to that 360 degree environment. You're basically inside of a ball, a sphere, if you will, looking around. And the background picture is the wallpaper on the inside of that sphere. So I'm just gonna move this little icon over to where I want it. And then over here in the properties panel, I can choose what action is gonna happen when the learner interacts with this object. So I think I'll just have it display some text here. When the learner clicks on this uh, interactive object here, it is going to display this text in a black box with white text on it. And then I can change the display duration here. So maybe I'll just increase that by another second or so. I can also have it just continue playing the project. So it just continued the timeline after they have interacted with this. I can also make this interactive object uh, a required field here. So must view once, and that would prevent any further movement in the uh, progress of the course until they have visited this interactive hotspot. Now I'm just gonna turn that off for here. And then we're gonna take a look here at the timeline. So yes, indeed, here is my hotspot. And if I move it out just a touch, you can see that it does have a little pause button on it. So it will pause this timeline. I'm just gonna move it back to the very beginning. And so that's it, you know, adding as many hotspots as you want. You can just go back and add as many of these as you want. They can do different things. Uh, maybe you would have it jump to another slide or maybe display an image. That's another way that you can get imagery into your uh, 360 slides here is to simply use a hotspot to display an image. But you can also have them just take no action at all. Now, that to me uh, might be a little misleading to a learner, so I'd be very careful when I'd use that but I'm sure that was a requested feature. Otherwise it wouldn't be in here. Now, what about quizzes? If I go over here to the slides drop down here, I can only add a 360 slide. I can't add a knowledge check slide or a question slide, but I can add quizzes to a virtual reality course. But how do I do that? 
Well, if I go over here and maybe just select this little bullseye here, uh, this is a little hotspot. They also have a hotspot that actually is a letter Q here for questions. So if you wanted to use that, you could certainly do that as well. Uh, but in either case, you select a hotspot and then over here in the properties panel, you're going to add questions. You only have a choice between multiple choice and true false. You can have as many of those as you'd like, and you can choose between a graded slide or just a knowledge check slide. The difference being, if you stick with a graded slide, it will also add a result slide for you, whereas a knowledge check does not have a result slide. So I'm just gonna add these two here. I'm gonna tell it okay, and it's gonna import those. And what you're gonna see over on the left in my film strip is that indeed I have two more slides, but notice that they are overlay slides. So the learner doesn't navigate to these slides. They simply appear over this 360 environment. Setting up these knowledge check slides is pretty much like you would do in any other normal project. So I'm just gonna forego that for now and just click here in the background to get back to my 360 slide. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and set this to the view that I want. So I kind of like this right here. My next tip for working with VR projects and 360 slides is when you go to preview or publish these projects, there's gonna be some differences here. So if I go to preview, I'm gonna have some different options here. Some of them are the same, uh, but then some of them are not. And even the ones that are the same are, well, really not the same. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, right here, from this slide, next five slides and or project. Now, normally this is a swift preview. In this case, it's not gonna do that um, because the 360 slide and the VR projects, well, they are not supported in the Swift player. So if I choose, say, from this slide, instead of the Swift player, I am going to get an HTML5 browser. So my default browser is Chrome and it does support HTML5. So here is my VR project right here inside of Chrome. I click to play it and now I can navigate around. One of the things that is a little indicator to the students is this little VR logo up here at the top. If you don't feel that that's going to be enough, you may wanna put an opening message. That could be a text label here or something else to that effect and let them know, hey, this is a VR slide. In either case, if I navigate around here, I can look over here and yep, there is my little hotspot. I'm gonna click on that. Notice that the text is distorted because it's kind of off to the side there. If I click this again and move it, notice that it, it moves with the environment. So I'm gonna let that go. Uh, I'm gonna hit the play button here. So to go ahead and advance to the next uh, items here. So I'll just hit play. Of course you can override that. So it automatically does this and goes ahead and shows the others. Um, this one doesn't do anything if you recall. And then here are my quiz questions. So let me just click on that. Uh, so as you can see, once again, the um, slide for the knowledge check is being overlaid over my 360 environment. And I can actually still kind of navigate around and you know maybe get a better position on that. I can put in my answers or select my answers here, hit submit, it'll go on through the next process here. Let's just do that one and get it out of the way. And then it's done and I get a nice little green check mark letting me know that I have completed the knowledge check. And so there you have it, the uh, VR project. When you preview it, you can interact with it just like your students would. Now, the last tip I have for you deals with incorporating VR into your existing uh, Captivate projects. So if you have just a, a standard Captivate project, not a video demonstration, nothing like a, a software simulation, just a standard project or even a responsive Captivate project, you can add VR to those very, very easily. So here I have just a standard project. This is not even a responsive project here. And I want to add a VR uh, element to this. So over here in my slides menu, I'm just gonna choose 360 slide. We're gonna see that same familiar uh, 360 environment here and the button to add that image. In this case, because this is an existing project, of course, instead of 
automatically navigating out to a file browser. It's giving me my library here, and I'm just going to import another image. Once again, I'm gonna navigate right back to that 360 BG assets folder that I talked about earlier. And in this one, oh, let's just look at maybe camera control. So here we have uh, this photograph here and I can kind of scan around. This has been touched up a little bit. Um, it is a photograph, but some of the screens here have been touched up and, and put in there, but not a big deal. It's still just a photograph. If I look up here towards the top, we can see the ceiling. And notice right here in the apex, we can see where the stitching is not exactly perfect. But is anybody really going to pay a lot of attention to that? I don't know. Maybe you can cover it up with an image or something to that effect. All right. Well, um, there it is. You can add a 360 slide into uh, an existing project. You can, once again, add just a text label or any of your hotspots here. Uh, and then you can add some actions to those hotspots. You can also add your media, such as your audio and your characters. And then, of course, once again, under hotspots, you can add another image. Um, the one thing that you cannot add here with the hotspots, if you'll notice, I do not have the ability to uh, actually add questions to it. So in this case, if you wanted to add a quiz, well, this is a normal project. You can go over here to your slides menu and you can add a question or knowledge check slide. Well, there you have it, folks working with VR inside of the new Captivate 2019. As I said, this is not an extensive review of the process. Um, you can certainly go over to Adobe's website and take a look at some of the introductory videos that they have about creating your VR projects. But I really wanted to point out some of the things that they just don't cover over there and just give you a little heads up on what you can and cannot do with these wonderful new uh, slide types and project types. So until next time, this is William Everhart saying, stay curious.